Hey everybody, Chad with Nobody Else's Auto. We are here at the Auburn Court Duesenberg Company in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, checking out, like I keep saying, amazing, I don't even know what's the word for this car, the Barn Fine, Garage Fine 1931 Duesenberg Model J Murphy Body Disappearing Top Car. Uh, like I said, it is stunning. Be sure to check out the video of the garage you found it in, getting it back here to the factory, the full walk around on the car. But this video that we're gonna do now, to me, it, it is really special. And that's the piece that really makes the Duesenberg what it is. That's its engine. Sure. The Duesenberg J engine, again, uh, 265 horsepower, part of the 20 cubic inch straight eight dual overhead cam. Uh, I mean, a lot of engine for the day just to carry two people around. Designed in the 20s. Right. This engine was designed in the 20s and it's dual overhead cam, dual overhead cam 420 cubic inch. They are works of art in and of themselves. So, and these cars, and I've said it before, but they were, the original advertisements had guaranteed to do 88 miles an hour in second gear. Now it's a three speed transmission and the national speed limit was 35. So <laughs> this is, yeah, they were pretty special. So we're gonna pop the hood on this thing and take a look at it real quick. Here's a couple shots of a restored engine of what these look like done. Now please remember this car has been not seen daylight since 1967. Correct and not been seen in the public since 61. They walked away in 67. So this is a barn fine version of it. Here's a few shots of a restored one, but here's an actual untouched engine that you guys are getting ready to fire up. So oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, let's take a look at this thing. Inside the engine compartment. That hood is long. And heavy. And that <laughs> aluminum is amazing. So look at that monster of an engine. Now they're supposed to be Duesenberg green, and this is red. This was driven into the garage in 67. So we're hoping we can look at the engine, get it started running, drive it uh, without restoring it for now, enjoy it as a survivor car, and then uh, move forward with a full restoration later on. But you can see when these the uh, valve covers of polished aluminum, all the, the aluminum intake, just aluminum everywhere. There's actually a, a Duesenberg emblem that goes on the firewall, which we have. It came with the car, but it's not on there. Um, the detail in restoring that engine and turning it into a giant piece of jewelry, it's just, it's the prettiest engine compartment that's ever existed as uh, You'll see in some other photos. And jewelry really is the only way to describe it. It is. It's it is. that it's amazing. Just, it's just a massive piece of jewelry. I mean, look at this intake manifold. I mean, that, and that's aluminum. Right. So those those are all polished. Get, I all take. All get polished. Anything aluminum on it will be polished. And there's lots of lots of bling under the hood. And this is one that is kind of rare because it's got the downdraft carburetor. The earlier ones, uh, which this is fairly early, but they had an updraft carburetor. So the carburetor is down there. And this the carburetor is on top and the fuel goes down. This is more efficient. This is the one everybody wants. Um, and I think even on the downdraft, I'm not even sure they were able to fit an air cleaner in there. But this has got an air cleaner. This one is is the choice for any Duesenberg owner. Everything you can uh, And obviously imagine. we see the steering gear coming down through here. And is that the generator back there? Oh, it is. We got and so generator and starter. They're massive. One's on one side, one's on the other side. But the detail and and then frankly, I'm not a Duesenberg engine guy. We built plenty of twelve cylinders. We built plenty of cord supercharged cars. I have never built a Duesenberg engine before, and so there's a few specialists on Duesenberg engines which will be advising us all the way on what it takes to get this going again. I don't think it's going to take a lot. My guess is that we can have it going in a in a, a few days work, but you never know. I mean, look at that engine. But we're gonna to try to get it running, then we're gonna drive it around the parking lot. So uh, we're looking forward to that. That's the next step. Let me show you the other side of this. Oh, one interesting mm -hmm. thing. We forgot to point this out. Your crew just found this this morning. Yeah, yeah. To, uh, found it in the, the car. For the, remove the valve covers. Right? And you see these special star nuts on these overhead cam valve covers. I found this in the car as one of your crew members this morning was yeah. going through the car found that actual original wrench still in it yeah so you don't have to mess them up putting you know yeah. a big pair of pliers or vice grips or something on them so uh having mm -hmm. that's kind of neat and uh that i think is the prettiest side of the engine they actually did supercharge a few of these in fact fred duesenberg who was the engineer for el cord was driving 
uh, disappearing top, Murphy body, Duesenberg, had a wreck, not a real bad wreck, but he had a wreck with it. Went to the hospital. He'd had trouble with pneumonia off and on for years. Went to the hospital, had a couple broken ribs, and died of pneumonia. So the car, his car still exists, but what Fred Duesenberg drove was a car just like this, except with a supercharger. And just a few had a supercharger. But open up this side of the hood, and you can see the exhaust manifolds. And the exhaust manifolds were chrome originally, so all that bling will go back on it. And they look like headers almost, the way they're, yeah. they've got the, the smooth curves like headers do. And Isn't that beautiful? But you can see it's, um, this engine probably last time it was worked on is back in the 50s. So all these years, I mean, you think 50s, for me, that's not that long ago, but uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, 70 some odd years ago. This car was worked on the last time. So we'll get it running again, and then I'll invite you down and see it drive around oh, the parking lot. Oh, yeah, that'd be lot. awesome. Yeah, isn't it? So. Well, that's a pretty amazing piece of engineering when you think about this was designed in the 20s. Overhead cams, huge engine. I mean, just the physical size of this thing is huge. And, and you've got, you know, 8- and 12-cylinder Auburn engines around here. And, and this even dwarfs the 12 cylinder. Right? Yeah, Robert it engines. really does. People think, don't know that it's a straight eight when they see it because of those uh, the dual overhead cam. But, but I always like to put it in perspective. Remember in 1929, Model A's had only been out a couple years and people were still driving Model T's. So Model T's, Model A's, and somebody drives it. Yeah, so you're talking about a, four, a basic yeah, four cylinder, yeah. you know, flathead engine and and this is what they were coming out with. Yeah. So yeah, this was with, for the elite, the movie star crowd. And what put Duesenberg and Auburn and Court all out of business, it was the heart of the depression. So if you're in the heart of the depression, who spends $15,000 on a car when you buy a Ford for $400? And most people couldn't afford that. Yeah, and then they couldn't afford that. So. And, and, you, and to put these cars out, like I said, it you know, tens of thousands of dollars in the 30s was just unheard of. Well, and a lot of the ones went to Europe, they usually were a, some type of famous person that owned them originally, but like um, kings and uh, prince and different people, you know, uh, with lots of money bought these cars. And in the United States, it was mostly movie stars, but just people that, you know, were on that top end of the scale for money uh, could even possibly afford one of these. And it's that way today. I mean, it's like... Yeah. Uh, yeah, they haven't gotten any less desirable. Yeah, who, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you, and, and it's a shame that it's that way, but who can afford a Duesenberg nowadays? It's a, uh, you know, you have to have a, a lot of wealth to be able to own a Duesenberg. But that, that's just what it is. He's a real doozy. Yeah. That's what it is. Well, and Doug, I can't thank you enough for inviting me down, you know, sharing the story of the car. Your story, I still, I still can't fathom not only what your brain was doing, but what your heart was doing when you walked into that garage and found an actual Duesenberg. You got a phone call and it was exactly what they told you it was. You opened the garage door and there it was, a 1931 Model J Duesenberg. So. Yeah, and you know, we are the Auburn Court Duesenberg Company. We're the remnants of the original company that made the Auburn and Court and Duesenbergs from 1900 to 1937. And so this, coming back to the factory, we call this the factory, where the cars were built originally, even though they were in Indianapolis, Indiana, uh, in Auburn, Indiana. We uh, moved the factory here in 1960, and so it's pretty neat to see one of the cars come home uh, back to the factory, and that's that, that's where we're at right now, and it's an absolute pleasure to have a doozy in the, in the building. And like I said, I'm, I'm still trying to process it. It's it's that spectacular. There's not really There's not really many words to describe something like this the car is that is that awesome and that amazing so be sure to check out those other videos the video where doug found this thing brought it back to the factory the detailed walk around of some of the specifics of the design and the body of the interior of this thing and i definitely hope you enjoyed the engine video and now i hope you can understand why we dedicated a whole video to the engine because it was it's well worth it so doug thank you appreciate thank it you. Be sure to check out the other videos on this playlist the auburn court duesenberg company on the channel be sure to check them out on their website they do a ton of cool stuff right here with Auburn's Cords and Duesenbergs. This is the place to go for it. Parts, restoration, repair, service. You're the factory. We're the factory. So, so yeah. yeah. This is uh, 
a piece of history that you won't be able to duplicate anywhere in the entire world. This moment in time, this car right here doesn't exist anywhere else. And so we're, we're really, again, very excited about having the car here. And we can't thank you enough for inviting me down and sharing it with us. So. Yep, you're welcome. Doug, thank you. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, be sure to check out the playlist. We got, we're doing some other cool videos while we're here today. And uh, everything in here is amazing. So thanks for watching, everybody. And we'll see you soon on the next video.